It's hard for me to put this any other way, but here we go again. This sort of thing just keeps happening and happening with Starship lately. We have what appears to be a successful liftoff and flight to space, or close to space anyway, before things start going wrong. And yes, I maintain that things were going wrong with this rocket before it ever reached space this time, because my sharp-eyed team noticed what appeared to be a fuel leak underneath the skirt. And in addition to that, were also leaks with the booster that created the loss of that vehicle as well. Now, yes, this was the reuse of a booster. That was a substantial accomplishment by SpaceX, but really when it comes down to it, that's the only positive takeaway that we had from this flight. They may not have lost control of the orbiter in the first few minutes, but they did lose control of it pretty early on in the flight. They had cut off all telemetry and all cameras in mid-flight from the ship. I think as they were trying to figure out what was going on and whether or not they could compensate for the leak that was putting the ship off course before the commentators came back and told us that once again Starship was out of control and was going to have an ugly re-entry into the atmosphere. Keep in mind, with the first six test flights of this rocket, we never had this kind of spectacular re-entry, but we have had this experience now on three consecutive flights and even if you try to say that this is a more recent version of Starship essentially a brand new rocket which it is the progress still isn't as significant as it was with the first three flights of the original rocket. By IFT-3, even though the booster hadn't made a successful burn back and capture yet, the orbiter made it all the way to the other side of the planet and was able to at least attempt a controlled re-entry, a much better re-entry with IFT-3 than we had with this flight. Now, once again, just to be clear, I do believe that eventually SpaceX is going to be able to work out the kinks with this rocket, but I'd also like to make the point that if this was any other company besides SpaceX trying to develop something like this with this many relatively unsuccessful test flights, that company would probably be in a world of hurt right now and flirting with bankruptcy. It's only SpaceX's massive success and Elon Musk's incredible cash reserves that keep this whole thing going. And another concern that I just need to keep expressing is this is the rocket that's supposed to be putting humans on the surface of the moon in a mere two years. Forget about Mars. This thing needs to be China to the surface of the moon. And right now I have some significant doubts as to whether or not that's a realistic possibility before 2030, and certainly not on NASA's timetable of 2027. I wish I could have been a little bit more positive during all of this, but currently I just can't, at least not honestly. I'll give you a more in-depth review of the flight and what went wrong once we know more about it. So until next time, stay angry about space.